What's up guys, my name is Joe McGovern and today I'm gonna to take you through some practice exam questions to become an Autodesk AutoCAD certified user. So if that's something that interests you, grab a drink, grab some popcorn, and here we go. All right, ladies and gents, welcome back. AutoCAD certified user practice exam. This is question number six of practice exam number one. If you're not sure how to get to this point uh, using G metrics and Certiport and whatever else, Check out my first video, I'll put that up top. I just did that a few days ago and you guys will see how you can sign up for this um, and purchase the exam. Or if you just wanna follow along and see what kind of questions are on there, that works too, all right? So question number six, uh, it wants you to open up the home.dwg file. We're gonna use that for all five questions that we're gonna do in this video. We're keeping it short, that way we have, uh, everyone wants to watch short videos and you know I don't like long videos either. So here we go, all right? So if you don't have that file or know where that file is, you can click on this little folder right here. That's gonna bring up where your files are. You can double click on home.dwg. Uh, I'm gonna buzz through this. I also wanna mention that I've got the keyboard picture back up there again. So if you don't like that, tell me in the comments. I hope it doesn't get in the way of everything we're doing, but I did make it a little bit smaller in this video. That way we can see uh, as much screen real estate as possible, all right? So question number one, under the view tab within the views panel, select the polyline name view. So you're gonna to go to view, let's close properties. You're gonna to go to view and you're gonna open up, which one was it? The polyline named view. So polyline, you'll see in here, it says draw a polyline that touches points one through four to match the image above. One, two, three, four. Very simple. Make sure that you're not using the line command that you're using polyline. And you're gonna go from the left side of this red line. You're gonna to click to this point and you're gonna to click to this point and then to that point and hit enter. Now, before I hit enter here, you'll see that the numbers are following my cursor around. That's called dynamic input. I don't like to use it that way. I like to default everything to the command line. So I'm gonna hit F12 to turn that off. And then, like I said, I'll hit enter to get out of my tool or you can hit escape, it does the same thing, all right? Now, how do we know what the length of this is? We could do three dimensions and add them together, but why? Uh, click on this object that we just created, right click in the black drawing space, go to properties, and you'll see it says length 347.83. I have my answer down here, 347.83, and I will hit next, and you can see that that is correct, and hit continue. All right, next question, home.dwg, go to the bathroom named view. So, view, bathroom, we're in a bathroom here, it wants us to move the sink object labeled sink 50 units to the left. So this is the sink here, clearly. We're gonna click on that block. We're gonna do M enter for move, or if you're in the home tab here, you can use move right here, or you can type move and hit enter. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you can snap to any one of the points on here. It does not matter. Or you can just click in the black drawing space, and then you're gonna go left on the green line. That green line is called the polar line. So that is F10. Make sure that that is always turned on. And on that left uh, direction going on that green line, we're gonna do 50, enter, and it'll move it 50 over. Uh, also, bonus tip, O, S, enter is object snap. That's what allows you to snap to the different corners and centers and midpoints of all the different things in the drawing. I always have that turned on. Endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection, extension, and tangent and then hit okay all right and then you'll have your settings exactly like mine all right going back to the questions uh what is the position x value of the object very simple click on the object uh in your properties menu right click go to properties you'll see it says position x is that big number so if you click on that number and highlight it you can do Control c is copy go back to the the question Control v is paste Check your decimal points, one, two, three, four, five, dot, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, dot, one, two. And it is good, we hit next, continue, correct. All right, next question, this is question number eight. We're only doing five in this video. Uh, under the view tab within the views panel, select the AC object name view. So if we go to view again and we go to AC object, you'll see we have an air conditioning object here. Uh, rotate the AC object in the drawing to match the image. So before we rotate, uh, and we're gonna grab this bottom right corner of the AC unit, you can see it says 0.1. Before we rotate, I wanna talk about the angles within the AutoCAD software. So everything kind of works like a circle. If you're gonna go to the right on the green line, that's gonna be zero. 
If you're going to go up on the green line, that's going to be 90. Left is 180. Down is 270. And then back to 360 would be over here or zero. They're the same thing. So everything works counterclockwise when it comes to the degree angles in the software. So when I go to click on this and I do rotate, rotate is also up here at the home tab. Bottom right corner is my selection point. You can see that as I move my cursor around, it will rotate that object. Now, because I have F10 turned on, it will snap to the different quadrants of the circle. So I could simply go up and click, or I could do 90 enter. And the reason why it's 90 is because the object was facing to the left, and now it is going to face down, which goes from 180 to 270. 270 minus 180, 90 degrees. All right. So going back to the question here, it wants to know what is the X position value of the AC object? So again, click on this. Position X is that big number. Highlight it. Control C. It looks like 5.2 uh, when we're talking about decimals. So we put our number in here. We hit next and we are correct. Hit continue. All right. All right, so question number nine here, open the home.dwg. Under the view tab within the views panel, select the bathroom named view. So view, bathroom. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back. Every question that they ask you, they're assuming that you're opening that file for the first time and not having any edits or changes within it uh, from prior questions, okay? So what is the question or what is it telling us to do? Scale the sync object so that the scale X factor, scale Y and scale Z is 0 0.05. So this is also an easy one. Rather than using the scale command, which is gonna start and assume that this scale is one, for instance, if I go ahead and click this point and I do one over two for my scale factor, it's gonna make it half. But in this case, it wants you to click on this block and it wants you to go to the scale factor X, Y, and Z and change these numbers to be 0 0.05. So the scale's already set at 0 0.04. We're just bumping it up a little bit and making it a little bit bigger. You'll see it auto updates as you go through these boxes, but when you get to the last one, you gotta hit enter. All right, so going back to the question, it says, what is the distance from point one to point two? So we got these two points right here. You can use the measure command, or I like using the aligned dimension tool. You're gonna click from here to here, and you're gonna get 34.4. Now, I have a feeling that that's rounding right now. So because you can see the answer says, it's gonna be something, something, dot, something, something. And you can see I already have my answer here from the other two times that I shot this video where my mic wasn't working, all right? So now how do we get to that point? If I click on this, it's gonna say under text that the measurement is 34.39. So you can just put that in and run with it if you want, but let me teach you something. If this is rounding, you're gonna do DDIM, that's your dimension settings and hit enter. Modify, primary units, precision and make that a little bit more precise with two decimal points and hit OK and hit close and you get your 34.39. So going back, hit next. We got that one correct. Let's go. Continue. Final question of this video. We are under the home.dwg drawing under the view tab within the views panel. Select the trim named view. Now when you're in the view here, you can see that it's there's no trim one, but you do have to scroll down with your mouse and there, there it is down there, trim, okay? And we've got these boxes here. Uh, which rectangle do you select as your trimming object to obtain the following image? So I wanna teach something about trim here. In AutoCAD, I'm pretty sure about this, in AutoCAD 2020, 21, 22, 23, when you go into trim, you're already in what I call a quick trim, okay? Which means that you can just click anything you want and it will trim them between the closest two points. Now that's not what we wanna do for this one. For this one, we wanna use what's called cutting edges. Cutting edges is like a pair of scissors. So if we're trying to match this image here and get these two lines out, that one and that one, we wanna cut that at this line and this line. So imagine a pair of scissors cutting here and cutting here. That means that we're selecting this object as our cutting edges. So when you go to trim and you go to cutting edges, you're gonna click on the top here, that's gonna be this box, you hit enter, and then you're gonna just see that it's gonna trim between those two things. Uh, the answer then being which rectangle would be box B, you hit next, and then you get that one correct, and we are done with this video, okay? Now, real quick, because I still have your attention, you stayed around this long, that means you learned something. Please like the video, it's so easy to do. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell so you can see future notifications. I'm gonna do a lot more videos like this of the practice exam questions. 
uh, before I get into anything else once again, like Unity or other AutoCAD videos, okay? So listen, I really appreciate you guys watching. You guys are the best. I will see you in the next one later.